Today's video from Sam 4S Help. We're taking a look at uh, programming and using modifier levels on the NR500 series of registers. Uh, so in this video we're looking at the NR510F. Uh, but the process would be the same if you've got the 520F. So modifier levels are different from price levels. If you've used price levels in the past, you'll know that you are effectively shifting the price but selling the same PLU product. So you may have it at a discounted price for a happy hour or a specific function. What modifier levels let you do is sell multiple PLUs through the same PLU button. So the example I'm going to show you in this video is I'm going to have a mocker at three different sizes. So I'm going to have uh, on the keyboard, I'm going to program PLU number seven to be mocker small. And then using modifier levels, I'm going to have it available in regular and large as well. Uh, this is going to be quite a long video because there's quite a few steps you need to do. Um, it doesn't really matter what order you do them in. Um, I'm going to do them in the order of programming the PLUs then creating the modifier buttons because they do not exist on the standard keyboard and then editing how they work. Um, I probably recommend the first time you do this, watch the video all the way through, then do pretty much exactly the same as I do. So the same sequence for one set of products, test it on your machine to make sure you're happy with it. And then it'll, once you understand the concept, it will just be a case of um, adding your PLUs as you go along. Um, so I'll try not to waffle on too much because it's going to be quite a long video anyway. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up my PLUs. So this won't make sense. Well, no, it will do. I'm going to set up PLU 7 to be mocker small, PLU 107 to be mocker regular, and PLU 207 to be mocker large. Basically, the way I'll set my modifier buttons up is to make, when you press them, it'll make PLU 7 be PLU 107 for modifier 1, and then modifier 2 will make it sell PLU 207. So that's how I've come up with those PLU figures. So to do the PLU programming, key round to PHGM, um, then go into PLU, add and change, one PLU. And the first one, we can simply just press the button here, PLU number seven. So we're gonna make this mocker small. So we press the cache button to go into the description programming. And then we can type in our description. Give it a price. I'll leave all the other settings um, as they are, like the standard settings. I'm only going to program the prices and descriptions because the key point of this video is to show how the modifier level works. So that's PLU 7 programmed. Now I need to program PLU 107. So to do that, because there's no button for it on the keyboard, type in the number and then press the PLU button here. Brings up the data, PLU 7. So again, we can just type in our description. Cash to save. Pop in a price. Again, we'll leave preset, preset override and the tax rates at the default settings. Clear to come out of there. And then now we need to program PLU 207. So again, 207 and then the PLU button. And that brings up the data for this one. Cash to program the description. Type it in. Cash to save, give it a price. And again, clear to come out of there. So we can just double check we've done those correctly. We have PLU 7, small mocker three pounds, PLU 107, mocker regular, and PLU 207, mocker large. So you can sell them as long as you know the PLU number without doing the modifier levels, levels, but obviously if you're busy in the coffee shop or whatever, you don't want to be trying to remember what PLU number a certain type of coffee is. Uh, so the next thing we need to do is to make um, the modifier level button. So the 500's got quite a small keyboard, so these are the default function keys. We're going to change two of these, so we're going to lose two functions, um, and we're going to get our modifier level one button and modifier level two button. 
Um, now the manual is useful at this point, basically if you've got it, you're looking for function key assignment, which is on page 91, so that shows you the process. Um, and on page 92 is a list of all the function keys you can possibly have um, on the machine. You're looking for modifier 1, which is code 358, and then modifier 2, which is code 359. So it's to do the function key assignment, you do need the C key, so it's the service key marked C. You need to turn it round to the service position, and then we're looking for line 4. You can either scroll to it or just press 4, and then cache to go into key assignment. You now type in the code, so for modifier button 1, the code is 358, that code I got from the chart. 358, and then you press where you want the button to be. So for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to choose received account. So now received account is my mod button one. Um, you press cache to end it. I think you can just go to straight to the next one. Uh, but if you've come out of it like I have, you just press cache to go back into it. And code number 359 will give you mod two button, modifier level two. And I'll choose paid out. So I've got mod two appear, cache to save and then we can press clear um, and turn the key round to the PGM position because what we need to do now is just edit how those buttons work. So you can see there, you get a little printout showing you that the buttons are now modified one and modified two. So the next thing to do, um, this is probably the most complicated bit if you're not watching the video or going off the manual. On page 140 of the manual is a list of all the settings for the modifier buttons. Um, so as standard, or even though you've made the modifier, modifier buttons, they won't work in the way you want them to. Um, so we need to go down to function key in the program mode, function key again, and then press the first function key we want to edit. So. This one is modifier one, so you can give it a name if you want. Uh, but the actual key settings we need to change are line three. We need to tell it to affect the PLU number, so which is defaulted to no. So you have to go into it by pressing cash, changing it to yes. And then the next line you need to change is affect digit of PLU. So although we think of PLUs as being number one, two, three, four, etc., they actually have up to 14 digits. Um, so to make PLU seven be PLU 107, we need to affect the third digit. So we change that to number three. And then the final line, which is on the next page, is the value of the affected digit. So this button we're programming is modifier level one. So we want this button to make PLU seven be PLU 107. So our value should be one. Cash saves it. And then we press clear to come back out of it. And now we'll do very similar for modifier two. So we're in mod two. So we need to go to line three, tell it to affect the PLU number. Yes. Scroll down and again, we're affecting the third digit because we want it to be 207 instead of 107 or 7 and then the only difference is this number instead of being 1 we want it to be 2 because this is the next modifier level. Cash to save, come back out of it and then when we're done with that when you're back at this program mode screen you can turn the key back to the register position. So what should happen now is we should be able to press our PLU 7 and we get the standard small mocker. Um, but if someone orders the regular size, we should be able to press the modifier one button and then press PLU seven again, and that gives us the regular mocker. And then the same with the modifier two, press PLU seven and it sells us our large mocker. So that's like a really neat way of getting a lot more out of the keyboard. Because obviously these machines, there's only 60 buttons on the keyboard, but by using the modifier levels correctly, um, you can then obviously enhance it. You can have up to five modifier level buttons. Um, the issue I have with these is this, you haven't got that much of a keyboard to play with. Um, so you kind of have to pick and choose as to what functions um, you can live without to get the modifiers on. Um, but hopefully that video's uh, given you some ideas. Um, the key thing to understand, I would always do one set of products like I've done on this video. I've picked one product. I've made my modifier levels. I've understood how it's worked. I've made it happen. I've tested it. 
now I could now sit with the till and go through uh, my remaining products because it would just be a case of populating all the PLUs. I hope that video has been helpful. There are different settings you can put on the modifier levels in terms of making them pop up or stay down or making them print on the receipt. If you've got any specific questions on how to do that, send us a message through YouTube. Otherwise, we'll put all the other programming videos um, up. Some of those will be appearing on screen now, so you're welcome to check those out. You can also subscribe to this YouTube channel or visit samforesthelp.co.uk for more. Thanks for watching.